everyone. Today I wanted to speak to you about mobile phones and forensic investigations. In particular when it comes to corporate type of investigations as well as uh, litigation matters. Um, now phones are crucial and they've become so important uh, to, these, to these matters um, mainly because we've become so dependent on our smartphone, right? Everyday use. Um, the average person can't even function anymore without their smartphone. So the amount of information that we can obtain from a smartphone is just enormous. And so therefore it often now, uh, especially in, in these days, is becoming a centerpiece of, of any type of investigation, uh, be it an, an in-house investigation or be it a, a litigation matter. Uh, now, oftentimes we get a lot of questions about uh, the capabilities of uh, phone forensics and extractions. And there's still a lot of confusion, um, both from, from litigators uh, as well as um, in-house counsel and, and uh, corporate IT staff. And in part, that is because smartphones change so frequently that it's really difficult to keep up with it, right? I mean, there's a new app coming out every few minutes and there's new updates coming out for OS versions of, of Androids and, and iPhones frequently. There's new models of phones coming out all the time. So capabilities change quite frequently. So even if you've um, had worked with someone on a, a investigative matter involving a smartphone that may have been in, in 2020 or in 2021, uh, there's a good chance that uh, things have changed in terms of what can be extracted and collected from that phone. It could be significantly more, or there could also be more restrictions as most of the phone providers are increasingly trying to add more security mechanisms that they bake into the, the phone's hardware itself. So to the answer, you know, what can I extract for the phone? Um, it depends. It depends a lot on the phone, the model, et cetera, et cetera. So oftentimes keep that in mind that what was possible a year or two years or, or five years ago may not be possible anymore or what may have not been possible back then may be possible now. So specifically when it comes to mobile phone investigations, the predominant platform for the last um, several years uh, without a doubt has been Cellbrite and it does have a lot of capabilities and functionalities and is probably the main tool that is used when it comes to uh, litigation matters, be it both uh, collection for, for ESI as well as uh, forensic e expertise and uh, uh, forensic expert witness services when analyzing phones and, and parsing records and uh, cell phone data, cell site analysis and things of that nature. So since Cellbrite is uh, such a big component of it, I wanted to go ahead and show you Cellbrite, UFED, what it actually looks like. Um, so you have some familiarity and show you some of its capability. Okay, so this is the bag that Cellbrite UFED comes in and the toolkit. Uh, as you can see, our or one of our units here, um, the bag has a bit wear and tear. Uh, obviously, we've had this for a very long time and it's been all across the country and highly utilized. Uh, now, this is the actual unit itself. It's a uh, has a touchscreen display and it has a source port right here where we essentially connect our phone over a USB connector. And then here it has a target port. Uh, that's where we connect either a USB flash drive or a hard drive where we're copying the image onto. Also, the kit comes with various adapters. There's a lot of different adapters that you can see in here. These essentially are to be able to support a large variety of different phones. Um, so thousands of different phone models are supported by, by Cellbrite. And these are some of the adapters um, so that we can image and clone um, anything from old burner phones to uh, modern versions of I iPhone and Android latest models. Uh, so these are some of the adapters. 
Now let's take a look at the unit itself. Okay, so we've booted up the unit and you can see here clearly on the screen that um, they on mobile devices. It also supports SIM cards, cameras, various mass storage devices, as well as uh, drones, um, which probably be another interesting video we'll do at, um, at another point. But for demonstration purposes, uh, we have a Note 5 phone here that we're going to connect to the source port, and that's what we're going to image. And for the target, we have a SSD drive, the Samsung SSD drive. We're going to connect that over USB to the target port, so that's where we're going to be copying the forensically sound image onto. Okay, so there's an auto detect function. It's typically should be able to detect that it is a Note 5 phone. Okay, it has detected it. Hopefully you can, you can clearly see this. Okay, so we're gonna select that. And now we have various options of extraction. And depending on which option we choose, it can change how much data that we're able to extract. Not every phone supports every type of extraction, so it all depends. Uh, for demonstration purposes, we're gonna keep it simple and we're just gonna go with an advanced logical extraction because that's gonna be one of the fastest. Uh, this phone would actually also have the option for a physical extraction, which you can see over here uh, to the right. Uh, that typically, if it's an option, will give you the largest amount of, of data to, to collect from the phone. But like I said, we're going to go ahead and do the advanced logical for demonstration purposes. All right, so we're waiting here for just a few seconds. And yeah, while we're waiting, um, let you know that each phone is different in terms of the capability of what what it can what can be collected, and that does change quite frequently. So the UFED unit itself is also updated frequently with with updates and additional capabilities. So we can see right here um, that we're ready to extract the phone, and we can see that it's been identified. So we're going to go right ahead and proceed with this. All right, so here we can see the different things that we can collect, including call logs, location information, contacts, SMS, MMS, calendar, pictures, audio, music, videos, ringtones, documents, etc. Okay, so we're going to select all of these. We do have the option here to be more selective. Let's say if we uh, didn't care about ringtones, we wanted call logs, location information, contacts, SMS, MMS, and let's say any type of documents and pictures and videos, we could select that. And now we'll start the process. Uh, we can see here the hourglass, it's starting on the call logs and locations. So it's trying to collect data from those two uh, simultaneously. And once that is completed, it will move on to the next. So here we get a warning that is typical. Okay. And once it continues with call logs and locations, it will move on to the next section, which will be contacts and SMS. Uh, generally, one of the questions we also oftentimes get is, you know, how long does it take to make a forensic image copy on a phone? And the answer is, of course, you know, it depends. It depends on the size of the phone in terms of storage capacity, as well as how much storage capacity is utilized. So one person may send a lot of text messages, but may not take a lot of videos and pictures. In that case, an extraction goes relatively quickly. Another individual uh, utilizes pictures and videos quite, quite heavily. And if that's part of what needs to be collected, then the entire process of um, collecting and extracting that information is going to take significantly longer. So while this here is going to take some time, uh, typically 
on an average, I would say you're looking at uh, one to four hours, which is about average for an extraction. Now, if we're looking here on the phone, we can see some activity. We can see that the call logs have been collected. And actually, I was a little bit too slow to, to catch it. But we can see right here that there are 119 phone contacts as well as 57 WhatsApp contacts. So, yes, we want to proceed of those. And here on the phone, we can now see that the contacts, the 176, are being extracted. Okay, so now the entire process will take some time. Um, on this particular phone, it's probably going to take uh, one to two hours. So we're going to go ahead and skip ahead and continue with parsing the actual data once we have a image successfully achieved. So now that we've made an image copy of the phone, this is the Solbright physical analyzer that parses the information. Uh, so this is the uh, software application that we essentially run on the computer, desktop, or laptop to then uh, review and investigate and analyze the information that's been stored on, on, the, uh, on the phone. Uh, so here on the data side, we can see several sections. We have uh, autofill, calendar entries. Uh, we can see here in red in parentheses 26. That means those are deleted calendar entries. We have call logs, contacts, cookies from websites that have been visited, uh, device locations, applications that have been installed, including ones that have been deleted, instant messages, uh, passwords, which include passwords stored on the device, um, exactly um, how many passwords from uh, various login platforms uh, will be stored will really depend on the on the device. Um, wireless networks, applications, we have archives, audio files, which include um, anything such as um, voicemails, um, audio files that have been downloaded and or sent, for example, um, via the phone documents, images, which are your typical pictures, videos, um, and additional uncategorized uh, information that uh, manually can be reviewed and parsed, and then also databases. Uh, most of the phones, the information is actually stored in, in databases, and some of the common ones are essentially parsed by a platform such as Cellbrite, and uh, there's always going to be additional ones that uh, Solbright or another platform doesn't doesn't parse. And so that gives us the opportunity to manually review those database entries. Now, um, for privacy reasons, I, I can't really show too much. But just to give you an idea, uh, we can look at the call logs here. Um, in this case, I removed the um, sender and recipient. For the entries, but we could see here we have timestamps, durations. Uh, we see that um, the status, if it was a missed call, an answered call, we can see if it was an outgoing call, and we would also have additional information, of course, uh, that include the phone number from which it was sent and, and received. Also, we have uh, wireless network information that I wanted to show you. Uh, that, for example, can be very interesting in establishing where an individual may have been. Uh, we can see here we have entries, for example, for uh, Panera, which would be Panera Bread, uh, Bahama Breeze. Uh, we can see Publix. We can see several um, hotels, such as the Hyatt Diamond Resort. And we can also drill further down to um, see if there is any GPS information to, to further uh, specify that. Uh, but yes, that can be very helpful wireless networks to establish if an individual was at a certain environment uh, to place them there or if they claim to have an alibi. Instant messages, obviously a big part. Um, here again, I went ahead and I removed the sender and recipient for privacy reasons. Um, but we can see here we have timestamps. I left some of the body here and uh, ultimately... We can add or remove um, columns here. The from and to, I removed those. We could add those. So this can be fully customized to display what you need. And then in terms of the ability to export that, we can export it into an Excel spreadsheet, an HTML file, a PDF, 
an XML file, and a Word document. Typically, the most common forms are going to be Excel and PDFs for production. Uh, PDF oftentimes for production, and Excel is um, essentially provides you with a CSV file that's going to be easy to further review, manipulate, and and filter. Um, in addition to that, Cellbrite does have a lot of additional uh, features and, and capabilities. If we go into reports, we can uh, fully customize the type of report, uh, provide the examiner case details, location, things of that nature. Um, also, for example, there is a, a Python shell where we can custom code um, scripts to further utilize um, to empower Cellbrite in, in parsing that information. So now that we've taken a look at Cellbrite UFED, um, hopefully you have a better understanding of its capabilities and how it is utilized in a smartphone or mobile phone investigation. Uh, now, there are other platforms and products available as well. Cellbrite is not the, the only product that has these or similar capabilities. Um, it does a sound collection and uh, does a good job at parsing information. Uh, like I said before, uh, different apps come out all the time. So what can be parsed and interpreted with a device will vary quite a bit. And in some cases, um, it actually requires a manual examination of, uh, of certain database tables to interpret additional data uh, when we do more of a, a deep dive into certain aspects of it. Um, I can't really go into too much more detail um, as I do provide expert witness opinions um, in, in cases that, that have to do with mobile forensic investigations and phone activity, but hopefully that has given you some insights. Uh, if you have any questions, please go ahead and, and leave a comment, or you may also feel free to contact me directly. I may not be able to respond right away, but I will try my best to, to get to it and answer all, all questions. So thank you for watching, and uh, hopefully you stay tuned for the next videos. Thank you.